Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Van Buren Variety Show. I am Bob Van Buren, your host. As always, I'm happy to have you here. Those that are watching this live as we go, and those that are even watching this later. So I uh, appreciate all the support that you've given me uh, this past year that I've been on the air. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe because there's going to be some new events coming up that you don't want to miss for sure. And if you like the videos that I put out, make sure you hit that like button. It doesn't take a lot of effort to hit the like button. You know, I like it. My guests like it to see who's watching. So uh, regardless, though, glad you're here. I'm very excited about tonight's episode. In addition to the guests that I have tonight, we've got a great, great topic tonight that touches us all. And I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. But I just mentioned that I have been doing this show for almost a year. We're not quite there yet, getting very close. But if you haven't seen the title of this particular episode yet, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to say I've made, this show has made a landmark uh, tonight. This landmark episode is number 50. This is my 50th episode of the Van Buren Variety Show, the Big 5-0. I am very pleased to have made this landmark. Uh, wow, 50 episodes. It doesn't seem to seem real, but I am just uh, really on pins and needles, tickled to death. This is the 50th one. I'm still going strong. I have a lot of guests that I've had in the past, including the one tonight and in future as well. So everybody thank you for sticking with me for these 50 episodes more to more to come so uh glad you know glad you're here but make sure you like and subscribe because hopefully there'll be 50 more lord willing so thank you very much uh buddy for tuning into the van buren variety show got a great topic tonight uh but let's kind of talk you know talk about what we've been doing all week for those of you that have been keeping up with my episodes uh you probably remember of me been talking that last summer uh, I lost my wonderful grandmother. She was in her late 90s and she lived a wonderful, wonderful life. And she passed away very peacefully that I'm very thankful of. We still miss her though. But what we've been doing since then, she had so much stuff. Antiques and I mean old letters. I mean just memories. And luckily I had the foresight the last year that she was alive I put my iPhone next to her and asked her questions about her life from the 1920s, the 1930s, the 1940s, and just let her talk. She didn't know I was recording, so she was completely relaxed. And let me tell you, folks, those videos are priceless now. They're memories that we can pass on to the whole generations in her own words. So speaking of my grandmother, I got a really, really... Uh, great memory I'm going to share with y'all tonight before my guest comes on. My grandmother collected salt and pepper shakers. I mean, to say she's probably got about 200 of them is probably a very low guess. But I brought some tonight, at least a couple, and I thought I have never seen salt and pepper shakers like this. And I want to share it with you to see if y'all have ever seen any, anything like this. These are salt and pepper shakers. Have you ever seen salt and pepper shakers like this? Well, this man here, he's the cook, and this is where the pepper goes. This woman here is the maid, and this is where the salt is. So here's pepper, here's salt. So what happens when you want some pepper? Just listen. <laughs> pepper, right? Here it goes again. He sneezes. But then what does she do after he sneezes with the salt? Did you hear that? He is sneezing. She is saying, bless you. <laughs> so pepper and the salt. I saw that and I'm like, wow. I, I don't know if y'all have. I've never seen salt and pepper shakers like this. And we, the family, we're holding on to her salt and pepper shaker collection they may be divided up with the family eventually but yeah uh, i had to share this i've never seen this so one more time i'll play with them one more time for you <laughs> oh, thank you granny for the memories 
And the reason why uh, this is so lighthearted tonight, uh, we're going to talk about a serious subject, but we're going to talk about it in a lighthearted manner in case some of you are struggling with this as well. I know I am. And I'll just put it out there, folks. Sometimes I need a big kick in the butt. And the reason I say that, you know, we've all had bad things happen to us in the past. I mean, we've all had things, people have said things to us, done things to us, not only as adults, but children. But my brain is like the old VCRs. I rewind it and I play it back. And I rewind it and I play that event back. And then I'm just, so I'm like, okay, Bob, snap out of it. So who can I get to snap me out of this and even snap you out of some of the stuff that you're carrying? Well, I've got somebody here that's going to snap us all out of it. Okay, so you ready? This is LaTanya Davison. She is a licensed master social worker, and maybe she'll always give she'll give us all a kick that we need. So let me bring her on now. Hey, hello, how you doing, hello, Tanya? Hi. Welcome to the Van Buren Variety Show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And you heard my monologue. So uh, let's just let's talk about your training first. Uh, tell us kind of how long have you been in uh, you know your field. Yeah, so I am again Latanya Davison. I actually am a 14-year Navy veteran, and oh, after uh, I got out of the military, I I went to nursing school for a little bit, but ended up switching over to social work, and I became a mental health clinician, which I uh, got licensed in 2016, um, and I've been working as a therapist for. Uh, adults and children in mental health facilities. And I also do individual therapy. I now do education out in communities. And uh, I also do stand up comedy on the side. I uh, have a radio show called Mental Speak. And I'm also a music DJ. So, wow. Post me you, in a nutshell. <laughs> you hate to use the, the pun, but you wear many hats. <laughs> many, many. I'm also a, a cat lady. So, <laughs> well, if you saw my episode last week, you see I'm a I'm a cat man now, but uh, and she's safely in the garage right now, so she won't be interrupting us. <laughs> I was looking forward to it. <laughs> um, yeah, this is fiftieth. I want it to be good. I want it to be cat free this time. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of tell us, uh, you know, we on a serious note, you know, we so many people are carrying around, if I can use the term, emotional baggage. Yes. You heard mine, mine where. You know, we've all had things happen to us, even as children. And I, I'm going to just put myself out there. I'm guilty. You know, the old VCR where I remember a memory. And it's okay to remember things, but then I play it, and but all the emotions of that come back. Yes. What they said, what they did, even as an adult in the workplace. And I play it over and over. And before you know it, I am really angry. Yeah. You know, and I, then I, I kick myself because I say, you know what? I should have could have, would have done this if didn't happen. Yeah. So uh, I hope I'm not the only one but, that does this, but uh, what, what do you do to a, you know, for a person that just, you know, that, just, that has these, I guess you could say emotional scars or these, these bad things they just can't seem to let go of? Yeah, well, we're definitely gonna unpack that. Bob, I, I wanna say first and foremost, as a man, that is the most courageous thing any man can do is speak up and say, number one, this is what I deal with. And two, this is, you know, generally men ha are, are, you guys have to carry around anger all the time, but mm -hmm. it's, it's usually something else. There's a lot of things that are behind that. And that's what, as a therapist, I help people do. Uh, as a mental health clinician, our job is basically using psychology to help people. And I got my handy dandy. We get into people's heads, right? Oh, <laughs> but I in, like that. <laughs> yeah, but, but in a but in a healthy way. Um, listen, human beings are not these. You know, we like to think that we're just. You know, our grandparents could. We're, we're told to you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps, keep it moving. You know, mm -hmm. something would happen to you in life and then you keep going. And what we understand now is humans don't work like that. Our brains That's are true. like computers. Uh -huh. I agree. Right. You're playing mm -hmm. a loop over and over because that's your memory. It's mm -hmm. data. Yeah. So and, and we'll get into that. But I just want your, your listeners to your viewers to really understand that 
we're not as, you know, uh, I want to say like that hard shell that our grandparents thought that, you know, I tough, you know, 20 no. miles in the snow barefoot. Like, no, exactly. <laughs> you, you have some, some traumatic, you know, uh, issues, uh, that have to be unpacked. We all do. Yeah. And we all do, you know, so, uh, uh, let's kind of talk about some of the, uh, some of the things now, one of the worst things and some people, you know, and hope I'm not jumping ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes now I'm not at that point, but some people just get so depressed at things they can't control. And what I mean by that, what's on everybody's mind right now, every news channel you turn on is the war going on in East Europe right now with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And I know people right now that are freaking out. And what I mean by that is not so much just the war, you know, to paraphrase, this could be a nuclear war. This could lead to World War III. This could be the book of Revelation. Oh no, oh no, my, this is the end of the world. You know, prices are gonna go sky high. There's gonna be hyperinflation, I'm gonna lose my home. And 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 they're just, they're, they're, they're just so tense. And uh, it may not just be the war, but it may be other things, politics. Uh, you know, unrest in the world, you know, just kind of, you know, tensions and pe people just go crazy. And, you know, they, they unfortunately sometimes even decide to take the the bad way out, suicide. So how do you, I mean, I guess I could ask you, how do you help clients that way? They're just, you know, they, they, they're just so worried. They, they just, they stay in a constant state of worry. How do we, hate to say, push them like, hey, let's okay, you know, don't, everything's going to be okay. So the little, think of the little squirrel, the little squirrel, you see it foraging in the, in the grass for nuts to eat. And what does it do? Every so often it freezes and it looks around and to see if there's a threat going on around it. Well, the squirrel, but actually squirrels can fight. You've seen squirrels fight, right? Oh, They're yeah. pretty mm -hmm. vicious little critters. It's so kind of territorial. Squirrel, <laughs> yes. So a squirrel will fight another squirrel, but a squirrel's not going to fight a dog. <laughs> I haven't seen it. No, I haven't seen I've it. never seen that. Not going to fight a human. I haven't seen it. So the squirrel is going to fight if it can. It's going to run most likely. And it freezes in hopes that a threat won't see it. We are the same way. We have the same nervous system. Our nervous system makes us fight if we can, run if we have to, and freeze if we can't. So when a human being has a lot of threats going on around it, war, pandemic, um, maybe a difficult household that you grew up in, any kind mm -hmm. of dangerous situation that the mind is like, what do I do? If it can't fight it, it's gonna run or freeze. Human beings, when we can't do something about a situation, we become really anxious and agitated. So that's that anxiety and that agitation when we can't do something about it. And it's out of our control, basically. It's out of your control. And over time, depression, when a person can't do something about it, mm -hmm. you become depressed. That's kind of in a nutshell. That's that's probably the best way I could describe it. So if you know people out there, you all have been there. You've been there where you couldn't you couldn't manage the situation. And when you've been in that situation for so long, it's like, you know what? Forget it. I'm just gonna sit here and I'm doing nothing. Yeah, I'm leaving I'm leaving life. I'm leaving society. You know? I'm out. Yeah. Count me out. Y'all got it. You know? Yeah. And I mean, who doesn't <laughs> feel that way? I feel that way sometimes. Okay, I feel that way a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think we all do. And yeah. I want your viewers to see, look, we're talking about it in a lighthearted way. It's a serious topic, but... It is, yes. But it's human. This is humanity. You we know? all do it. I mean, I, I can say a, I, I say a blanket statement. and But the best part, you know, is how how would you suggest, you know, using even me as an example, how, how does a person move on to say, you know what, that was in the past leave it in the past. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't say anything different. I can't do anything different. So how do we get those little voices out of our head that you yeah, remember when someone said that? Remember when someone treated you wrong? Remember how that made you feel? Remember all the emotions that you just, you know, how do you stop that voice? Say, hey, why don't you shut up? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in some cases, you know, tonight what I want to do is give, you know, I want to give your your folks um, some, you know, practical tools that they can use. But yeah. if it's gone on for a long time, you I highly recommend you get you a good therapist, get a good therapist or counselor at your church, somebody right that here. You, there you go. <laughs> um, but that you can talk to and and because a lot of times the things that happen to us, I think you said it when you were a child, right? There were situations mm-hmm. as a kid that you couldn't control. Who could you tell? And for you guys out there, right? Uh, men are told to suppress it and not talk about it. Boys are yeah. told to just man up and keep it moving. Keep quiet. Mm-hmm. Keep quiet. And you're expected to carry around all of that emotional energy uh, for for you could carry it around for the rest of your life. So talk it out. Talk about it um, with a counselor, a therapist for yourself. What you can do is start to ask yourself, really, how did I feel in that moment? Just identify what the actual emotion was when you were in that situation. Were you angry? Were you sad? Were you frustrated? Did you feel powerless? Did you feel helpless? Just sometimes saying it out loud can make you feel better. And so that's one start, one step. If you, you know, everybody's not going to go see a therapist, but just start really revisiting the moment and ask yourself, what did I feel then? And what do I feel now? So that you can start to bridge yeah. the gap. Does that make sense? Yeah. One okay. thing I've always heard, and you probably you might agree with me on that, is what when you're especially if you're holding a grudge, if you're whether well, it could be you know, it might be a family member, it could be a coworker, a former manager, you know, former friend, even former spouse, and I, and I've often heard it said, and I've taken this advice is where you know what when you built up anger and you think about that person and you're so your your happiness is being robbed. You're, I mean, what I've heard is you're not hurting that person that hurt you. You're hurting yourself. That's it. And then I've also heard that you're allowing your enemy to live in your mind rent free. Yeah. I mean, then they're not doing the thing. And so that tells me like, you know what? They're not going to live in my house. I mean, live in my mind. You know, that manager, I don't work for that boss anymore. So that's helped me. I'm like, I'm not going to let them torture me anymore. So you think you agree with that? I definitely <laughs> do. I have another one for you. Every, bitterness is like peeing in your pants. Everyone else can see it, but only you can feel it. <laughs> oh, I like that. I yeah, like right? that saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and 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 so let let's go there. Let's let's say it like this: somebody hurts you, and this is something that I'm starting to to understand myself. Just just the wisdom of being alive, right? Is that people people can only act from the level of understanding they have. Mm -hmm. So our parents and our grandparents could only do what they knew to do. Mm -hmm. And that was the best they could do. And does it, does it mean we take away the harm that was done? No. What we have to acknowledge is that if a person knew better, they would have done better. And since they didn't know better, the only justice, the only way to balance out wrongs Mm -hmm. is to heal, is to make the decision that you're going to let go of what you can't change. That's how you balance the scales again. And and you feel better once you do it. We we tend to think that that I I need that person to, you know, I got to hear their uh, apology. And what if you can't get the apology? They may not, you know, yeah, they, they may, may not, not know that they did wrong. They may not be able to apologize. They may pass on before they apologize. So again, it's it's us saying, it's kind of like forgiveness again is for you. It's not for them. It's releasing yourself from a debt they can't pay. Mm-hmm. And I can even add to that. I'm not a counselor like you, but I'm talking to my audience here. Yeah. You know, I'm talking to myself as well. You know what? If you've got someone that's hurt you really bad, whether it's a former spouse, a family member, a former friend, a manager, a coworker. Okay, and if you really dislike this person immensely, why are you letting them rob you of your happiness? You know, you're gonna let them just keep robbing you. You're gonna just hold that grudge. 
you know, and if, just think about it. If your enemy, if you have an enemy, and they knew that you were thinking about them, and it was making, it was robbing you of your happiness, wouldn't they love that? Do you really want to give your enemy that energy? You know, that's just my two cents there. You maybe love. you get some agree. <laughs> It's so, it's so good. It's, it's, you know, and I think that's something, Bob, that we're all trying to get to, you know, where, look at what you mentioned, the, the, the war with Russia and Ukraine, that is, yeah. that is, Russia is a country, and I saw somebody's comment in there, yes, there, you, you know, you have a map behind you, and when we think about world history, global mm -hmm. history, countries have debts and um you remember, remember the game risk or i risk? remember that the war con the, conquering the, the world <laughs> they have centuries old plans and things that they've been doing for a long time and they don't let go <laughs> as we could see once they set yeah. something in motion they don't care who it hurts no they're just going to carry it out that's how some people are. Some people don't think about the wars that they're going to start and they don't think about the collateral damage that's going to be done when they do what they do. And so when we think about that, we have to consider that we can only do what we can do. Yeah. You, you see it for what it is. You see someone's history. You see how they are. You understand it. And then you decide... I'm just going to stay out of your way. <laughs> Doesn't right. mean you have to, you know, allow them to treat you negatively. It just means that you understand where they're coming from and how they operate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got a few uh, uh, questions for you, but I, we have a comment from the audience I'd like to share with you. See if you yeah. can relate to this. Sure. Gary is saying social workers and counselors not only carry their own problems, they carry their clients also. How is that for you? I mean, we all have our own issues, but does that depress you sometimes? I mean, how do you how do you balance you know your problems and you hearing somebody else's problems? Gary <laughs> Gary makes a, a really good point. Yeah, we when we show up every day, it's this willful action. You know, no different than a nurse or a doctor or any mm -hmm. any other uh, helping profession, but we when you when you start out in the beginning you don't you typically don't have any boundaries you have this this heart of just 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 bleeding all over the place i want to sure. help everybody i want everyone to be okay and what happens is with wisdom you realize you have a lane you're going to stay in it and everyone's problems are actually their own what a therapist and a counselor does we help you solve your problems make their, so i make never their path. have to, i okay. never have to take it on in the oh. beginning i did i felt like i had to be the one to help the person fix it and solve it and I have to help the world and no the world become an active there. participant yeah <laughs> now it's i have tools you have problems here's some tools work your problems and I'm, and I've got you as a therapist. I'm in your corner. I know how to, I know how to approach your problems. I know how to help you change your perspective. I know how to make mm -hmm. you change your mind about something, but at the end you're mm -hmm. in the driver's seat. Well, let me ask you this, LaTanya, in your experience, and I know you can't talk about individual clients and there's client yeah, patient take information. Yeah, all day. No but, names, uh, no change names. <laughs> and just in the broad sense, what do you see more people coming to see you for as far as problems? I mean, is there one that sticks out more than others? Depression and anxiety. And depression they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. And I'll tell you why. So depression, remember I said that's the, you, depression is usually anger, believe it or not. It's not sadness. Oh, really? Mm, okay. It's usually long-term anger, meaning I can't change a situation. So to help your help your listeners depression is usually about the past letting go anxiety mm -hmm. <laughs> usually things i can't control that haven't happened yet so future past depression anxiety i help people come to the present help you deal with the past I like that mm -hmm. come to the present and not worry about the future because it's, it hasn't happened yet 
I never thought about that. Let's, let's, let's remember review that even for myself. The depression is something that happened in the past. Anxiety is something that's, you, that people would think is going to happen or they're worried that this should could, might happen. Should. Yep. And mm. it, like it could happen. Depression. I would have. I could have. I should have. If I had only done that. If, if I, I had, had said only, that. I ought to have. You should have. If it was me, I would have. Yeah, huh? All so, hypothetical. All hypothetical. They didn't happen. And tell so my I audience again. Yeah. That it did not happen. And I tell my audience that too. Hey, y'all, if y'all are saying, if I'd only done this, quit saying if. If did not happen. Hypothet <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, yeah, and that'll keep you stuck. I mean, who wouldn't be depressed about what you could have, should have, would have done or what you wish would have happened? Right. Um, uh -huh. I think that, you know, the biggest part for people, and and I say this like to those, especially, any, you know, people who have, have a faith in a higher power, I say you have to trust that events that occurred, everything is in order. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And I then I always go back to remember the relief valve is that you can always you can always change your actions and how you think about the outcome. That's what rights the wrong. That's what's given to you to heal anything that's happened before. And then I also say we wouldn't know what good and love are if we had not gone through struggle. It's just the way the universe works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've actually heard it said, and you, maybe you've heard this too. Is and I'm guilty of this as well. Again, I'm putting myself out there. I'm not oh. blaming anybody else. I'm pointing the finger right here. Is I used to, and maybe other people, they always think about what they don't have. And you know what I did? I turned it to something positive. Instead of seeing what I don't have, what do I still have? Yeah. And I'll use my grandmother as a, as an example. You know, it hurt when she died. She was ninety. You know, not in her upper ninety. She'd been with me all my life. And, you know, for a while I said, you know what, I don't have my grandmother anymore. All my grandparents have passed away now. But then it, it just, you know, I, I got right back. I'm like, well, what do I have? I've got four to seven other family members that are still here that I can talk to. I, and I, I can deal with, you know. So I try to turn it to a positive. And it don't have to be family. It could be like, okay, I wanted this type of, you know, vehicle. But I've got this vehicle and it's paid off. So... I try to turn myself around where instead of focusing, well, I don't have this, I don't have that, that's not half. What do I have? I've got this. I've been blessed with this. I've got good health. You know, I, I, blame, I, I think of all the positive. Is that a good way to kind of look at it? It is indeed. And I want to, I've been reading the comments um, of, your, of your viewers. And I would say, you know, if someone says, for instance, I think it was someone who put, you know, they mentioned that they have before, you know, thought about, um not being here you know let allow people to express their pain it's mm -hmm. yes it's okay to say i've not wanted to be here when i'm doing work with people in the hospital and i'll you know i'll just put it out there is that yes a lot of people come in and their depression has gotten to the point where they no longer want to be here on the planet and the first step is not saying don't say that the first step is i get it <laughs> exactly we can all relate I totally get it i can mm -hmm. totally relate to that let let and i would say that's probably one of the greatest tools y'all is the moment you fight your truth you'll feel you'll judge yourself you say you shouldn't say that why did i say that why would i even think something like that because it's a possible option to think that way then after you've worked through that feeling after you've kind of come to terms with it mm -hmm. then bring in gratitude so let the feeling come because that's what emotions are for emotions are are I, I i call it energetic information it's the it's the energy of our nervous system and it lets us know that we're happy we're angry we're sad let it come feel it sure. bring it out it. bring it out mm -hmm. don't suppress it 
Absolutely. Don't push it down. Don't tuck it away. Don't pretend. Don't guys, I'm talking to you guys. Don't pretend right here. <laughs> men don't say man up. Don't ever say that. Say, I am angry. I am sad. I don't like the situation. After you've worked through it, talk to a friend, whatever you've done. Now we can go, you know what? I do have some pretty good things going on in my life. I do, I do have, you know, people who love me. I do because you'll be able to see it. Exactly. You'll be mm -hmm. able to really go there. But unless you've dealt with those feelings, it's hard to get to that place of positivity. That kind of brings me to my next question. Uh, yeah. Talking about people that don't deal with their feelings. I mean, men and women alike. In fact, let me read the question that I had for you. Yeah. You're talking about people that have just given up all hope. Um, my question is, why has suicide become an option for humans from both a sociological and a biological perspective? Such a good question. So there is research that, that says that think about when a person's been told, um, for instance, I do a lot of work with kids in the schools. Oh, that's uh, good. And, Glad and, to and hear teachers that. and counselors and things like that. It's, it's, it's really great work. Good. But imagine that as kids, what have you heard since you could walk? Don't touch that. Don't do that. You can't. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't say that. You can't go there. You can't dress like that. You can't eat that. You can't. And we didn't realize mm -hmm. how negative everything is put in the negative. Don't, can't, shouldn't. After a while, people start to think in the negative and then they start to talk to themselves negatively. You shouldn't be doing that. Why are you doing that? Who does that? Why would you do that? When are you going to do this? Why haven't you? Mm -hmm. Negative, negative, negative. And we didn't realize it. So suicide is, is maybe biologically sometimes a situation where a person has attempted to be a human, but they've been told you can't, you don't, you won't for so long that they think, well, maybe I just shouldn't be here. So that's one mm -hmm. theory. It's one, one consideration that people just have given up because it's like, well, you're telling me I can't human. You're telling me I can't do what I need to do. So why am I here? And that's a legitimate question if somebody's been yeah. so negative for so long, right? Push down basically, you know? And that's wow. everybody. That This is why it, y'all, it doesn't, it doesn't know any, thing about background about your upbringing about your color about your religion about it doesn't know any of that it's mm -hmm. all a human struggle absolutely yeah so one thing that unites us i think hmm. another question a kind of a follow-up question um, i said how can people effectively cope and recover from undesired life events and outcome we kind of touched it a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. <sighs> that one's rough. Um, I, I'll just, you know, from, I, I'll put myself, I, I like to be transparent with people. I think Me too. <laughs> that, yeah, let's just be open. When things happen to us that are undesired and we, you know, we think to ourselves, what would be a better state than this? What would be better than this moment? What would be better than what happened to me? It's all relative. You can relate what's happened to you mm -hmm. to what's happened to someone else. Sure. I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to relate it to anybody else because everyone has their own experiences and the way that they react to their truth. Absolutely. But what I want you to do is embrace the experience of being human, the not getting it right, um, that there are things out of our control that everyone has free will that everyone can people can choose to do something that will hurt you what has helped mm -hmm. me as i've gotten older and i'll tell you just in the last week this is something i had to do okay um someone had said something hurtful to me and i was mm -hmm. <laughs> who would say I'm something back. hurtful to me oh my gosh yeah <laughs> <laughs> And what got me out of that 
mentality in that mm -hmm. moment. This is this is new for me. I'm 43 years old, and this is the, this was new for me. Okay, I like to I hear said, it. <laughs> I said, okay, they said such and such to me, and I immediately followed it up with as I have done to another, as I have done to another. Oh, so yeah. in situations where let's say, you know, obviously there's atrocious things that people do to others, but I'm saying in, in human interaction, when you find yourself feeling so hurt by something someone did, as you have done, it doesn't mean that another, you know, that you disregard exactly. what the person did, but it helps you kind of remember we're all struggling to do our best. Does that make like sense? That. Absolutely. In situations that you couldn't control or let's say it was just something so bad that that happened to you, you what you want to do is say say what you wish would have happened. What do you wish would have happened? Well, I wish in that situation I had have gone home. I wish that I hadn't have gone to that place. Mm -hmm. I wish sure. let it out, say it and acknowledge what you wish would have happened. And then when you're done, say, but it didn't. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. You got to give yourself an out from what happened. And this goes back to what you were saying, Bob, why do I keep replaying this over and over that it happened? Because there's no out, there's no escape. Okay, this happened. I wish it would have been this, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. And I'm sad about it. And I'm yeah. angry about it. That's the escape. That's the release. Try it. And it'll, you know, let's I, 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 I encourage your viewers to do that. Just Give yourself an out from a situation that you cannot change. I'll do that. Yeah. 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 Like I said, I'll just try to do, you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, didn't happen. You know? <laughs> so let's just, you know, let's just kick it and move on, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a compliment, uh, Latanya. I'm going to put it on there. Aw. 43. Wow. Certainly <laughs> don't look 43. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Mary. I appreciate you <laughs> trying trying to there's a lot of gray here this is this is all from social work <laughs> i wasn't this gray before i went into social work is it a gray there why do you think i wear a hat ah, <laughs> it's not gray to, it's actually going <laughs> it's going back if you know what i mean so I know, I know, yeah, yeah. no i need to i need to put a hat on myself no and i want to say that i like i see everybody supporting one another and i love that that's great i like yeah. that too yeah. Okay. Uh, next question I have for you. Uh, how does limited lack of historical knowledge create social conditions for unrest and discord among the citizens? I like. I'd like to hear the answer to that. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> There's a lot of discord out there, oh, no matter what it is. So. You know. How do we get past that? I mean, what do we do? <laughs> Here's what's here. I'll, I'll give you all an example of what's what's happening in the schools right now that um, principals will tell me or administrators will tell me when I go to schools, they uh, they're saying that the kids are acting out towards each other like adults. So they're bringing oh, adult no. topics into the schools and the, the the they're like where is this coming from the kids yeah. are watching the adults right mm. the kids are watching the news they're yeah. watching the adults and how they interact with each other now think about the kids the kids have no historical context of why people are acting towards each other the way they are people have no idea why russia is acting towards ukraine because they don't have historical context. Mm -hmm. So when we look at we look at society, people will take on fights and sides that they don't even know anything about, and they'll they'll t they'll dislike another group, another person, and not have any history about mm -hmm. why. Yeah, they have no clue. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? But mm -hmm. it's part of. You know, being a human requires us to have tribes. We we have clans and tribes. We're no different than than the past, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you have a tribe and um and it is natural for humans to be look for a tribe that's like them that's normal that's mm -hmm. i would hope that you would find people that are like you common it's, traits you know common traits that's what makes you strong as a tribe in addition to finding that we also have to consider that that's what the other group did the other group also linked up with like minds and like traits yeah. Uh, exactly. So that they could have strength in numbers, so that they could get resources and take care of themselves. Everyone is doing that around the planet. But if you don't understand why they're like the way they are, why they mm -hmm. do what they do, why they talk how they talk, you're fighting um, ghosts. You know, you're fighting for no reason. Yeah. And you're, yeah. So, you know, I, I just encourage people to really think about that, that you are nine times out of 10, you're no different than that person. It's just that the motivations, you just don't understand. And maybe, maybe ask more questions. And like you just said, it's environment as well. Uh, you use the example of kids in school. They, they not necessarily emulate their parents, although they could, they emulate what they see on TV, video games, you know, the news. In fact, let me kind of tell you a brief story. I like the story. I, it's kind of a personal story. It's kind of a sad story. Uh, some friends of mine, now this was more than 20 years ago. These kids are now grown. But uh, there were two people, couples there, and each one of them had a son that was about a year and a half, not quite two, okay? One of the little boys took the other boy's toy. I mean, you know, when you're a year and a half, you don't know how to take turns. They just take, you know? And all of a sudden, the other little boy, the owner, he kept saying something in his, you know, and I kept saying, what is he saying? You know, because he, he, he was trying to take the other the toy away from the child. And he was muttering, but then I finally realized what he was saying. And I will just say how he said it, but you're going to know what he said. A year and a half little boy, and he goes, cut it out. Cut it out, Emmett. And I'm just, I was mortified. I'm like... Where is this one and a half year old little boy getting that unless he's hearing it oh, he's from his parents telling him to cut it out? Yep. You know, I'm like, yep. and so what you just said about the children in school, again, that's where they're getting a lot of this, I believe. You agree? 100%. I mean, oh, we're. It was so sad. Yeah. We're, we are little sponges at that age and on what what we hear all around us and it you know bob i like to think that sometimes things have to get a little you gotta get i guess the word is not worse but we have to see what we don't like before we start to do what we do like i agree and it's I just agree. part of it it's part of Call being a out. human yeah mm -hmm. it's part of this journey i mean we've had to learn what what is the worst of us what's the best of us and if that's the worst of us and we're all seeing it and we're like, man, that makes me sad. It's the emotion and the, the sadness that we, we're going to accept it. We acknowledge yes. it. We mm -hmm. see it. We accept it. Absolutely. And then we do what we can to bring about the change. Right. Serenity prayer. I'm going to have the peace to accept what I can't change, courage to change what I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And to know I love that. The one that I can change is me. I'm the only person that I can, Latanya is the only one she can get up every day and make sure she does what she's got to do. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't control anybody else. You know, you know, what's really helped me, um, again, you're going to think I'm a total mess. I keep confessing this stuff, but when I was in my teenage, teenage years, I did. And I hate to even admit it. I used to worry what other people thought of me. Like, oh, no, you know, I better not say this because, you know, I, they won't like me very well. Or they'll think, oh, my gosh, did you hear what Bob said? He actually believes that. But uh, it was some friends of mine that close me. Good, Bob, you'll be a lot happier when you stop worrying what other people think and be yourself. And I tell that to my audience that's listening right now, the live audience and the people. Because quit worrying. Your life is not based on what other people think of you. Yeah. Latanya, you want to add to that? That's what I say. <laughs> I, I just, I would say, just in the last couple of years, have learned to stop, 
So I'm, I, I told you, uh -huh. you know, it's hard. It's hard. Look, as mentioned, this is what I do for a profession. I'm still a human being. So mm -hmm. I have all the issues too. Um, but yeah, no, it's, because what did we hear when we were coming up, whether at home, at school, at church, at, it was always, okay, now listen, Bob, we're going into your Aunt Sally's here. Mm -hmm. I you have Aunt Sally, but if you did, I did. <laughs> when we get in her house, you're gonna sit here and you're not gonna, you know, because whatever zip you it. Did, you're gonna zip <laughs> it, it, because it reflects on your parents, right? Yeah, and exactly. so we've been told since we were little to think about what other people think. We didn't realize how much we were told. Now you can't touch that. Don't do that. Don't say that. People so won't like you, you if you do that. They yeah. won't like you if you do that. So then you get out in the world, and your mind is like, okay, don't say that. Don't do that. Don't. Yeah. Don't. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so does it, you see what I'm saying? And so yeah. it it's we have been conditioned for so long to worry about what other people think. And then we have a television that was looking back at us and said, make sure you color your hair like this. And yeah. This All these ads. Mm -hmm. Go here. So we're, we're, we're getting, we're, we're seeing it and we're breaking away. You know, I'm glad to hear that. I appreciate about you, Bob, is that as a, number one, like I said, only as a man, I mean, the show host, of course, but your courage to speak on these things is going to help so many people. I'm, I imagine so many people have been helped by your honesty and just being so forthcoming. Well, you know, like I say, you know, I'm I'm human too, and yeah. so you know, and it actually helps me to speak because I'm thinking, okay, you know, I, I'm not a you know before I would hold it in, you know, yeah. like okay, if I said that I got this problem, I'm worrying about this, then people think, man, Bob, you're a really you know weak-minded individual. But when I talk about it, it's a release for me, you know, especially if I've where I've been and I've got over it, and hopefully I'll help other people with that as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's the great, I think it's the greatest strength. It, yeah, men are taught that it's, it's weak to speak your feelings, but imagine how strong and courageous a person has to be to say the truth <laughs> because exactly. so many people will hide the truth or lie, but the person that speaks the truth and stands out, that's the person that gets the, the, the talk show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what? And Latanya, one of our uh, audience members uh, wants to add kind of what you just said about the children, you know. Yeah, Mary yeah. says, children should be seen and not heard. My nan used to say that all the time. And we've heard that too growing up. So, yeah. So, Sit yeah, down. I'm, be quiet. Don't spoke until you're spoken to. Don't embarrass me. Don't yeah. embarrass me. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and think about what, what Mary, the point that she's made. If you are told that as a child, don't to not be seen or, or be seen, but not heard. And then you have to, then they're like, okay, get out in the world. So you're out in the world and you're not supposed to be heard. Where's yeah. your voice? Now you're around coworkers and managers and other people. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's where, I think that's where the, what will people think of me mindset comes in. You know. And there's the, and then there's the anxiety. Think about exactly. it. So now I'm worried about what all these people are thinking. There could be hundreds of people They're in talking your about me. They're yeah. talking about me. Mm -hmm. Makes you paranoid after a while, and you can't. Again, there's the anxiety because you can't mm -hmm. control what they think, and if they're all thinking about you, that's a lot of thoughts. Exactly. You know, that's, that's that's a lot of threats. And it's a lot of voices in your head. That a lot of voices in your with. head. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, you talked about television just now. We talked about, you know, what kids are saying. And not just kids, but I'm talking about adults as well. That brings me to my next question for you, LaTanya. I want to ask you about social media now, which is, you know, television, but social media, you know, your Facebooks, your YouTubes, all that. Uh, why is social media simultaneously the method for deconstructing and rebuilding social balance? In your social opinion. media, social media is if we really, so we're here talking, this is a great use of social media, right? Mm -hmm. We're having a conversation. You're, you're, we are not in the same room. You're, you have viewers that are watching. Wonderful. We could share ideas and we can, this will be for 
however long the internet is up, people can access the, these conversations that sure. you're having. Mm -hmm. Then there's a part of it where we can also create a false reality. So teenagers, for instance, they, they can go on TikTok and, and Instagram and they can All this set stuff. up fake profiles and they can put a different name to it. They can put a, a filter on their face. They can use somebody else's picture. They can become something that's not real. Abs yeah, unfortunately, so, yeah. Right? So it's almost like a video game simulation when you think mm -hmm. about it. Um, so there's these two worlds of we're doing a great work here. And then there's mm -hmm. also people who are building something that's not real. And then they're they're thinking that it's real. So then you got these two sides of the coin. And, you know, again, I always hope that it's it's working for the better, for the good of humanity, which I, I like to believe and focus on. But yeah, you're if 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 everybody was is believing what's going on on social media at any given time, we're putting the best parts of ourselves on it, right? Sure, absolutely. Um, but the beauty of what you and I are doing tonight is we're being honest. We're bringing the not so glamorous side of being a human, and we're we're being truthful and honest about it. That's the that's the strength of it. And that's so the healing. Able. That's the step yes. forward. <laughs> and that's what fills people up. Kind of want to kind of talk about some of your your expertise. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of kind of a rundown. Uh, we talked about um, you know suicide, the mental health, mental illness, but kind of tell us about stigma. What what would be a good example of stigma? Stigma is um, for your viewers not familiar. Stigma is almost like a. I want you to think of like just a public shaming of something. Oh, really? something something that is not acceptable to discuss so for how long has it been not okay to discuss mental health issues that was keep that at home and then when it's at home we don't talk about that when we leave out of here mm -hmm. um and so if someone gets out in society and talks about it it's usually like Shh. So hush tones hush tones so stigma is kind of it's almost like putting a stamp on someone um and marking them as off limits so to speak mm -hmm. and, or a subject even or yeah. a subject yeah those are just things that yeah we don't stigmatize something that's not acceptable to talk about but we're here we are here we are and look how openly we're doing it and i think what is mm -hmm. it mary mary said you know she had no idea men have yeah, these, yeah have these, yeah. these kinds of thoughts. Those are yeah, it does, it does happen. I mean, I'm sorry, guys, I've got to out us here, but we all go through it. So <laughs> maybe y'all don't, but I do. <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Listen, those are those are the people who come to therapy after a while. After a while, when people just can't do it anymore, they they eventually come for therapy because they just can't. They've been you know, they know that the stigma is out there. So they come where they know they can be comfortable talking about those kinds of issues. And I encourage everybody at some point in your life, if there's things that you've struggled with, go see a therapist, talk to somebody, get mm -hmm. over the stigma. We're, we're here. We're not going anywhere. And um, problems are not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can count on that. But, you know, we and it's not always heavy. It's uh, I'm I'm a jokester. I'm really lighthearted. In Me my too. Therapy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, you know, it's we talk about serious problems, but I think it's 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 a gift of 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 God to me to be able to laugh about something, even if it's tragic. What a gift! Exactly. Like, once it passes, I can turn around and go, "Well, that was that was crazy." <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> I didn't like it, but. I mean, it happened, and I can find the funny about it, you know. Yeah, and I and I've done that as well. I just kind of make it, you know, turn it around, you know. Flip it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you kind of about your your expertise. You're a licensed master social worker. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the training you had to go through. Did you have to go to any kind of college or a degree, or did you go to some other kind of training, you know, or you know, 
programs? What kind of how did you uh, get into it as far as the education goes? Yeah, so I have an undergrad in uh, sociology, and then mm -hmm. I went on to a, a master's program for social work, and also have a master's in social psychology. Oh wow! And um, and so a lot of school. <laughs> I was in I well between well with the Navy and all of my time in. I was in school for like 16, 17 years. It was something crazy like wow. that. Wow, <laughs> a lot of school dragged out. Yeah, just dragged out time, but. Um, ultimately, yeah, I got my master's degree and then the licensing is taking a, a test um, and I have to uh, renew my license every two years. So I have to take training um, throughout the year. Um, I see. So I'm always and I'm always researching and I'm always, you know, mm -hmm. just looking up new ways to work with people and help people. But a lot of my training, we're called practitioners for a reason, y'all, is practice who are practicing um, oh I said that makes I, sense. <laughs> I learn from my clients they teach me kids teach me the adults teach me I learn from other counselors and therapists I learn from psychiatrists and nurses and yeah it's it's a it's a great field um it sounds it, interesting mm -hmm. so necessary right now with everything going on especially yeah. after the pandemic um we are we gotta heal we gotta heal we, we gotta we come will. together we yeah will. we will we will you, you know despite you know I, I i'm a very optimistic person by nature i think you know i've always said just in, in our country alone despite maybe our political differences our religious differences we we're, we're all one we're all human being yes you know you know we don't and it, no nobody there's no rule that says we have to agree all the time everything but we can come together you know that that's my uh optimism of life <laughs> yeah and i say this to people too there's no look you don't have to i'll say it like this you don't have to heal until life puts you in situations where something just isn't working anymore so yeah. i don't i don't tell people that you know you nothing's a problem if it's not a problem until it's a problem sure. it's not a problem um exactly so mm -hmm. just do you be you and you know embrace who you are um when something presents itself that you just absolutely you can't handle it or deal with it just know that there's people out here who are willing to help you you know explore your problems either the past sure. or the present well let me ask you about your practice uh Lat latanya um when you do uh, when you speak to someone that needs counseling, either because, you know, for their mental health, do you do in-person visits or do you do like Zoom or, or do you do both or just one or the other? We do both. We do both. So um, obviously because of the pandemic, it's made it easier. A lot of therapists are doing Zoom now. So I do Zoom calls. So it would look just like this. <laughs> it would look just like this, um, talking to my client um, and they are sharing and and usually taking notes and mm -hmm. i'm sharing you know information on my screen sure. um and or we do face to face and we'll do activities together just to you know kind of help the person again pull out those sure. feelings pull out those thoughts i also do group therapy sessions oh, that's um, nice yeah. yeah so people coming together and talking and that can be very that's that's very helpful to people because um man you get to hear that somebody else is going through what you're going through you'll get i'll get they can empathize yeah they can mm -hmm. empathize man and especially like when we have the military folks um oh yeah that'll come sure. in and they usually the guys they're like oh well, i'm not talking and then tough man yeah <laughs> i'm not telling you nothing and then, <laughs> but we, there's always a guy in there like you who's like look this was going on and it, it softens mm. the other guys and they're like, okay, they open up and it, you know, there's so many approaches now. There's people that do coaching, life coaching. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different ways to, to help, you know, to get help. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm kind of, I cover them all. Um, that's good. I have cats who just now decided to start playing. There's my cats playing. <laughs> See, at least they're not in the picture with you like they did me, but I wouldn't mind if they get in the picture. <laughs> yeah. 
but uh you, but the cats are therapeutic animals get you know pets are very therapeutic do you do uh just a certain geographic area or do you like is someone from washington state down here or florida or new hampshire or arizona or texas can you in do time, all over the country in time in time but no currently texas and soon to be georgia so okay I can, that's coming yeah, so <laughs> yeah yeah it's coming it's coming um but oh you hear the bell you heard that yeah they, i heard that yes <laughs> yeah. um and uh, i guess the tuna wore off uh but yeah so just texas and in georgia um but i will be um starting to, to travel and do training in schools um, oh so i like that that would be nice in the future yeah that's awesome. Do you have like a, a website or I saw uh, or like any kind of podcast that you do? I sure do. So people can go to mentalspeakllc.com, mentalspeakllc.com. I'll put that and, up there. Yeah, and there's um, all one word llc.com. Uh huh. And there's there's uh, links to my podcast. Um, Is this it? That's it. That's all it. Right. And uh, there's links to to past. Uh, shows on there. I've interviewed uh, celebrities and, uh, you know, other oh, wow. fellow comedians had uh, conversations. We've done like police uh, first responder discussions and all kinds of different stuff. It's uh, from there's my cat going crazy, y'all. She <laughs> had the same problem. You're having yeah. the same problem I had last week. <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying but that's okay. not to be like, I'm trying to ignore it, be real professional here, but she's just decided to take over the show. Um, so, so yeah, uh, but you know, and, and it's still a work in progress, but the ultimate goal is to have a, a, you know, a helpful blog, helping people with anxiety and things like that. Be having some courses up. So my goal is the world, we can heal when we're ready, when we want to, Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to, but let's stop complaining and do what we sure. can this is the, our power is to heal this thing called the mind and the heart you know let's let's heal it and then we'll go from there we won't worry absolutely. about what we can't control absolutely yeah well Tony, this has been a very very great episode i've learned a lot just by talking to you and i know my audience will too or has and uh counting the people that will be watching this much later. So uh, let me bring that up just one more time for the audience in case y'all missed it. Mentalspeakllc.com. Uh, a wealth of information that I know that you'll find something there. And um, I'm just, I'm impressed with your resume. I mean, I, I'm, of course, I'm, you know, I like your counseling, but all this other stuff you mentioned, <laughs> stand-up comedian, all this mm-hmm. other stuff you do. Where do you find the time? <laughs> I wish. What time? I What's wish. that, right? <laughs> I wish I, I know what is time. Um, you know, I I really believe that. Um, I also throw this in here too. I actually started skydiving in October, so I I I have skydiving. I have skydiving. Oh. <laughs> so I've actually jumped two times with a with an instructor by myself. So I did two tandems with someone on my back, and then two times with an instructor. So I've actually been able to land myself. Wow. And I. And I that's my therapy. Um, time, I think, is, you know, when you've had loss or you've experienced hardships and things like that, we don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time don't. to ask, why didn't I do that? Just do what you can with the time that you have and the resources that you have. Don't hold back. Right. Leap, leap, jump. You Absolutely. Know? Um, and I see her question. I see it. Um, and yeah, I can answer that really quickly. Uh, yeah, why let me go ahead and put that on there. Yeah. Uh, why do so many comedians suffer from depression? And I can actually give you an example. Yeah. Robin Williams. Yes. Robin Williams was one of the funniest comedians out there. I mean, I, mean, I like all his movies, but Mrs. Doubtfire is with me forever. And for him to commit suicide, was, you know, it shocked everybody. Yeah. And there's so many out there. So can you answer that question? Why do so many comedians suffer from depression? So it's, and it's going to be like a, maybe a chicken or egg kind of question in a lot of cases. Huh, okay. And, and it's very complex, but I'll say in a nutshell, a lot of 
those of us who do comedy are sensitive. Uh, somebody mentioned being empathic, being empath. When you're mm -hmm. sensitive to your environment, you kind of see everything. And a lot of times people who've been, let's say they didn't necessarily have a traumatic upbringing, mm -hmm. but they're sensitive to other people. You just, you just are very observant and mm -hmm. you're able to take on emotions and ways about others. Does that make sense? Like you're yes. able to kind of absorb, you're almost like a sponge. And then when you can't deal with those emotions yourself as a kid or as a young person, it makes you funny <laughs> and it makes you be able to do impressions and observe because you're observing humanity, but you can't always separate yourself from the feelings. Does that make sense? Or you may yes. even take on the emotions of the world real easily which makes you angry and remember what i said depression depression is more anger it's more rage i can't change yeah. this why yeah. won't this change it's not as sad as we think it is it's more exactly despair, emptiness yeah. it's kind of a mask i guess you could say too yes the comedian yes in fact on a personal note uh i was in community theater many many years ago i did a lot of plays back then we had one guy who was the proverbial jokester. I mean, he could make you, you could have the worst day. He could make you laugh within two minutes. And to long story short, he committed suicide. Yeah. And we were shocked. But we, we've always talked, well, maybe he got into theater, comedy, especially comedy shows, to mask how he was really feeling. You know, exactly. it just, it, 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 like, it's shocking. So I think a lot of people, me included, used to, we wear these masks. Mm -hmm. We don't exactly. show our true feelings because so so we have to either make people laugh or get involved in theater to become another character. So yeah, and and that movies like Robin Williams being in movies, you know, it kind of it masked the true Robin Williams that we didn't see. In my opinion, no, I agree, and and I think again, it also lends itself to if you're sensitive to other people's emotions or you're able to. I, I say it's, it's, it's a downloading, like, cause I do impressions. I can do impressions of people. I'm just watching mm -hmm. people. And then it, it usually is like, I don't know. It's, a, it's, it's kind of goes, it's a talent to be able to, to give people back what humans do, mm -hmm. but then you can't deal with what you do. You can't deal with your feelings or how you react to certain things. So mm -hmm. you're watching other people do things and then you can't get right. So you see a lot of them yeah. they'll have drug and alcohol issues because they're numbing their own emotions. And exactly. it's generally going to be men, right? In a lot of cases, it's going to be men, believe it or not, middle-aged men yeah. are going to be uh -oh. more likely to take their lives. Yeah. Okay. Not uh, me. Not me. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> not this man. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but no, again, and you know, bring we'll bring it back lighthearted. Let's look at it like this. Let's do that. Let's yeah, we've let, we're let's about, send it on, let's on a good note. Kick ourselves in the butt and move on. Human you know? beings, we're just we're silly. We're absurd. We do silly stuff. Yeah, like that, yeah. <laughs> you know, just everything that we do. So I tell people like sometimes if somebody's doing something, just find a way to laugh. You know, turn yeah. it into a joke. Uh, we're get all get something funny like that, you know. Get some salt. Start collecting salt shakers. Salt get salt and pepper shakers. Shaker. Hey, my grandmother lived to be in her late nineties. Maybe she there's something to that. She yeah. has the secrets. Yeah. She <laughs> left the secrets for you guys. They're salt and pepper shakers. That's how you live a long time. Well, Tanya, we're out of time, but I have enjoyed this conversation. I've learned a lot. And so your expertise, and you know what, on a personal note, I admire what you're doing because I, I can't even fathom how many people you've probably helped that were on the brink, you know, where they had just given up hope. And yeah. uh, I, I, we need more people like you out there, you know, yeah. and even though I'm not a licensed social worker, I try to be, I try to be positive with people, you know, even if my polar opposite, I'll say, you know what, hey, we can still be civil to each other, you know, so... Hopefully uh, that brings people a little bit more peace and happiness. 
I think so. And I, I felt that, you know, I feel the community. I'm just, just reading the comments and the support. And that's what it's about is supporting each other and seeing people in their truth and accepting them for who they are, right? Where they exactly. are. And thank We're you human. for, thank you for the opportunity to come and, and be able to speak on something so important. I'm, I'm grateful to do it. And Latanya, on a personal note, I would love to have you back again uh, soon. Talk some Please more. Please do. Please do. And, uh, Let's, yeah. We'd love to hear more about your stand-up comedy, too. I'm very interested in that. So that might be another show. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Definitely. Thank you so much. And thank you to all your viewers for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thank you, Latanya. Have a great thank week. Thank you, Bob. Take care. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, you know, it just seems like one hour goes by so fast. You know, what do you do? You know, but, you know, hey. Don't get depressed. Like I said, we just talked about that. Don't get anxious. There will be another show. There will be an episode 51. So, again, if you're just tuning in, this was episode 50 of the Van Buren Variety Show. And I just, I couldn't be more proud. Not just for my own accomplishment, but for you, the people listening and watching these shows. Um, it makes it all worthwhile. Uh, I feel like I'm really providing a good service. So, uh Hopefully, you know, the, the 50 episodes that I've done, you've learned something, you've been entertained, and so maybe even uh, impressed. So <laughs> we'll see. So uh, that's going to do it for me tonight. Again, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video. If you really like the guest and the topic, that like button really, really shows a lot to uh, me and to your guests, to which topics you're liking to see and hear from. So that's going to be do it for me this evening this is bob van buren for the van buren variety show thank you all for listening and have a great week